everybody, Aaron with Otter Creek Farm. Today I'm going to do a quick review of the Massey Ferguson 4707. I have about 150 hours on the tractor and things have gone well so far. I'm not going to give you specifications. You can look those up as easy as I can. Uh, somebody did a great video and went through every control in the tractor, everything soup to nuts beginning to end uh, uh, on the tractor itself. So I'm not going to repeat that process. What I'm going to do is talk about some of the things that I've noticed to be good or bad. And the first thing I'm gonna say being here in Florida is cab is an absolute must. The AC makes life bearable in the summer heat when using the tractor. Uh, I would, can't imagine ever having a tractor without a cab at this point. Uh, I guess if you're doing heavy, heavy land clearing all the time and you're really busting into the brush and things like that, having a cab can be a little bit of a hindrance. Uh, I suspect at some point I'm going to break a window, but until then I'm going to enjoy the AC um, and the, the interior comfort. I sat in a John Deere, an older model John Deere, not too long ago, a friend here in the area, and the cockpit was so tight at six foot one, 240, I could barely get in and out of the tractor. If I ever you know, had an accident, I would definitely die in the tractor. Uh, the cab of the Massey Ferguson is spacious uh, for bigger guys. It's comfortable to get in and out. Uh, everything ergonomically is laid out very nicely. So uh, overall, very satisfied with the tractor itself. Um, you know, definitely a good investment if you're going this direction. So let's talk about a couple of the, uh, the other little things. Actually, I'm gonna mention the first big thing because I want all the tractor manufacturers to be listening to me when I say this, in that uh, I had a custom skid plate put underneath the tractor and I've done another video on it and I'll link to it here so you can go take a look at it. But the very first thing that I noticed when buying this tractor was there was a lot of lines and hoses underneath the tractor. And when you're doing land clearing, things get up under your tractor all the time. So having those things exposed are a huge problem. If you're gonna use this just to, to do traditional farming out in the field, not a problem, wouldn't bother with it. But every tractor manufacturer should offer a skid plate that can be added to the bottom where there's cutouts for oil changes or other connections that are necessary. It bolts right up to the frame of the tractor. It's a half inch thick and it's cut out to allow the wheels to turn, things like that. Um, having that as an option that is cut on a CNC machine right from the manufacturer is a great way to make extra money and it's a great option for those of us that are working in some really tough areas. So. Uh, please manufacturers take a look at that or if you're an aftermarket fabricator uh, offering the skid plate on there is a huge huge plus uh, for guys that need that level of protection and I can tell you from stuff flying out underneath the tractor to just plowing straight through the bushes I am super glad that I uh, I paid the extra money and it wasn't stupid stupid expensive to get it added so maybe they should have charged more but it's the only one they've ever done so they did it you know for me just for me uh, as a custom solution. Uh, the other thing I like about the uh, the 4707 in this class of tractor is I can run a Bama Light CP572. It's a brush cutter. It cuts up to four inch trees. Uh, it's about 2,000 pounds and the tractor handles it pretty darn well. So I haven't really run out of power. I haven't run out of lift capabilities. Uh, that thing's a beast and the tractor you know does a good job managing it. So the power to weight ratio is is all there. Um, the uh, the interior, the uh, the rear lift arm lever, for some reason, sometimes doesn't always respond. It, it I, I can move it and nothing happens in the rear, and then eventually I like push it forward all the way, push it back all the way, and then and then it starts to work. You know, I have checked the level of hydraulic fluid and I don't have a problem there. Um, so I'm not sure why it's not responsive immediately. Sometimes, you know, once I'm out working and I'm constantly using it, the thing's spot on. Um, it does tend to float a little bit, so when you move it, you know, the arm, and you stop moving it, the arms continue to move. You pull up a little bit, the arms continue to come up. So there, there's that drift in there that makes it a bit of an art to get it aligned perfectly, especially when you're trying to hook up implements and things of that nature. The other super cool thing uh, with this is the rear controls for the lower lift arms. And those controls make getting implements on and off the tractor much, much easier. Um, you know, you get it close, you get it underneath, and then you come into the back and you can use those two controls to raise and lower the arms, the lower arms, to pick up your implement. And if you're just trying to fine tune something and you know, you're, you're not using quick attach uh, hooks, 
you know how hard that can be to get it perfectly aligned. Well, if you're standing out there, you can just tap it and move that down so you can get your pins through. So those are uh, a lot of the things that I really like and dislike about what I have. Let's walk around here. So you'll notice on this tractor, you've got lots of glass. Visibility is great. Uh, having a window tint option would be very nice, especially in the Florida heat. Uh, you can take it to a car window tint place after the fact and get it done. But, you know, again, if you want it delivered ready to rock and roll, then having a window tint option from the uh, tractor dealer would be a nice way of, of addressing some of the Florida heat. And every tractor in Florida that has a cab is going to need it. So why wouldn't you offer it, right? Um, the next thing that I'm hesitant about is the location of the hydraulics here. Uh, this to me is exposed, you know. I, I, when you're going through trees and bushes and things like that, you have a tendency to catch those things. Now it's pretty heavy duty, so I haven't run into a problem where I've ripped something off. Uh, I, I try to do things slowly so I can catch these types of things if a big you know, limb was to get in there and start pulling on some of the hoses. But you could do a better job at protecting that. Again, if you're doing brush clearing, that's a concern. If you're just doing agricultural farming, then that's convenient, right? So you have to decide what's gonna work for you based on the type of work that you're gonna be doing. Let's move around to the front. So one of the things that concerned me was branches and such coming through and damaging the tractor. Uh, I put this grill on here, that's a piece of, I don't know what the material's called, but it's steel mesh. And I cut it to fit over the grill, and then I used stainless steel zip ties, which you can also buy on Amazon, and zip tied it in place. So as I'm going up to a tree or bushes or whatever, I don't have a branch that's going to come through and just poke right through the front of the tractor grill. Uh, it, I mean, it's a new tractor. It's already been abused. Uh, I, I want to keep it in good shape as I can for as long as I can. And that was one of the additions that I think is an easy add-on. Uh, you know, you could probably charge 150, 200 bucks from the manufacturer to offer a protective grill to go on that part of the tractor. So, um, you know, even if you're just a tractor dealer and you want to cut something custom for your customers, that's an easy one. Um, uh, it probably costs 40 bucks to, you know, to do that and it protects the grill because what's that grill going to cost if you got to replace it? I don't even want to know. So, um, just working to keep the tractor in decent shape. The rest of the tractor up front, you know, everything's accessible. The hood pops up. It's got a nice hydraulic spring on it, which is nice. The oil, you can check the oil without lifting the hood on the side. Uh, a little bit hard to get to, but you know, other than that, uh, the, the tractor's been super solid. You know, this is the second tractor that I've owned. I had a RK before this, and uh, it was a 55, and it just didn't seem to have enough horsepower. I didn't think the tires were big enough, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I stepped up to the 70. Uh, 74, 75 horsepower tractor, and I've been much more satisfied with this. And if you're thinking about buying a tractor, let me just simply say this. If you can afford it, buy more tractor than you think you need today because you can never add horsepower, you can always use less. And there are times where I barely use any of the capabilities, but there are certainly times when I'm moving buckets of dirt or I'm plowing through heavy stuff that every bit of horsepower is necessary, and you're never going to be disappointed if you have more horsepower. So. Uh, spend what you can on getting that horsepower and you'll be satisfied. So I hope that helps you understand the Massey uh, Ferguson 4707. Uh, if you have questions, comments, uh, you know, put them in the notes below. Otherwise, uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, like it. And I appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next video.